don't know why I didn't start going to the Chabad house from the beginning of this journey. This was a wonderful experience, bar none. But then again, I've had so many wonderful experiences on this journey, so whatever. It was great. Shalom everyone, my name is Es and I'm taking you on my lovely conversion journey. Woo -hoo -hoo. Sorry guys, it's been a little while since I made a video and I wanted to get you guys all caught up with what's been going on. We just celebrated Purim and I originally wanted to do it with my sponsoring families but it seemed like nobody was really doing like a full experience for me and I wanted to get the real thing. I wanted to hear the Megillah twice. I wanted to go and have a feast. I wanted to give my Mishloach Manot. I wanted to help people. I wanted the full, full, full holiday. So I decided to go to the Chabad close to where I live. And this is where I will be building my new community. I was very hesitant. I knew that I was going to go to shul there. I just didn't know when. I was like, why not go on Purim? It's a very fun holiday. It's a joyous holiday. Why not go and experience it there? So I've been having conversations with the rabbi. He explained everything to me. I fasted and since it was a day fast, it wasn't even all that hard, but I did work that day and that was, <laughs> it was a little difficult to not drink or eat while working, but now I know for next year. So my expectations for this shul was that it would be the same thing as my conversion shul. I was a little, this is going to sound so bad, but I was a bit disappointed when I saw that it was like a legit house. It honestly reminded me of my church when I was growing up, the church I grew up with. And it made me very sad. Like that first night of hearing the Megillah, when we pulled into the driveway, I was just like, this doesn't look like a synagogue. It looks like a good church. I, like, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. So that feeling, that nostalgic feeling of how I grew up crept right in and I didn't want it to ruin my experience. So I had to snap back to reality. Like I'm becoming Jewish. Like it's been better. It's been better dealing with this. It does creep up every now and again. You start to think, you start to get that little creepy feeling coming up every now and then and maybe it'll never go away, but I'm definitely dealing with that way better compared to how I was in the beginning where I would just start crying at any given memory of my childhood or JC or anything like that. And now it's more so like just the shock factor and then I just snap back to reality of what I'm doing and how far I've come. When we walked into the shul, it was very different. I'm so used to my conversion shul. It's a very big, very beautiful shul. The mechitza is, is this long and this high. And there's just, it's more formal, um, a little bit more fancier. I, I don't know, it's just very different. When I walked into this shul, it was very casual which shocked me because I just assumed that everywhere was like this, like how my conversion shul was. So when I walked in, I was, I felt like I was overdressed <laughs> and people were in costume, which, which I, I understand it's Purim, but I also thought like, okay, I didn't know we could like be so dressed down. I would have not looked so fancy. So I kind of kept my jacket on most of the time. So, it's, it's very small, very small community. And I wasn't too sure how much I would like this. I, I just was, I don't know, I'm so used to just so many people coming up to me, so many people talking to me and kind of having surface level conversations. But when you're in a shul where it's just like, maybe there had to be maybe 20, 25 people max compared to 70, 80, even 100 people, I'm like, this is different. It, it just reminded me of how I grew up. My church growing up, it could hold maybe, maybe 200 people, I think. To be honest, it's not that big compared to some of the churches I've been, th been to in my life. So this shul definitely brought me back. And I had a guard 
set very, very high. I felt like I was a little like standoffish because I'm just like, where, where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Once I decided to just kind of accept the situation, I'm like, okay, I'm here. This is a new show. Get over it, Esther. The first night, the rabbi was not there. Uh, it was somebody else reading the Megillah, which was nice. He read through. I was kind of shocked at the banging of Haman. I knew that was going to happen, but I didn't know that it would happen as many times. I didn't know we would be saying it at almost every Haman. It was great to hear. And you know, we wrapped up, we finished, and then we just went home. And I was just like, okay, this was different. I, I didn't connect with anyone the first night. I was with a few of my friends and we kind of went there, did what we had to do and got out, in and out. <laughs> there was really no social, the social aspect wasn't there yet. So I was like, I, be, I was starting to get nervous. I was like, oh, what what am I gonna do for the next? I have to come here again. Like, I didn't know how I felt. I felt like I was in a different environment and I felt like I needed time to adjust because I've been converting with a totally different shul for the past year and a half. And now I get thrown into this and it's totally different. So I went home that night, very sober. I didn't drink anything. And I was just like, okay, Maybe tomorrow I'll get a different vibe. The rabbi will be there and I'll feel much, much better about the situation. So I'm very happy that I went in with an open heart and open eyes because the second night was like blew me away. And there are a lot of things that happened on my conversion. You can watch all my videos of all the things that I've experienced, but celebrating Purim, like, you hear people talk about Purim, and this is coming from the non-Jewish perspective. You hear people talk about Purim, and it's like, yeah, it's like the Jewish Halloween, and it's, you know, but I'm like, after this experience, it's so much more than that. So much more. And there's a lot you have to do, a lot of prepping, a lot of giving, and just a lot of community. Like, you cannot celebrate this holiday alone. You need a community. And... Because I chose, I think it was just fate for me to choose to start off this community on, on Purim and celebrate Purim with them because I've never felt so at home during this conversion in like in a while. Like I, I love my sponsoring families. I love my shul, but I felt like I, I haven't been able to, to be so intimate about my journey to somebody in person in a while. And I got that when we were celebrating Purim together. So on the second night, me and my friends, we walk in and immediately the energy is different. <laughs> they have the tables all set up. We, um, we were, I was introducing myself. People were talking. We were having a great conversation right before the Megillah reading. And they read the Megillah. The rabbi was there. He was instructing us on where we are in the reading, which was great because I was lost many times. They, I was ready to bang for Haman's name. And once the reading was done, we had a lovely feast and we were drinking and socializing. And I felt like I was at home. I didn't feel like the pressure I normally do to make sure I say everything correct and do everything correct, like how it usually is. <laughs> and that's a pressure I put on myself. I go to shul, I dress nice, and I, I try to be as correct and politically correct as I can because I don't want to insult anybody. I also don't want to look like an idiot. All rules went out the window on Purim. I was talking to the rabbi, I was talking to his wife, I was talking to my friends, I was making friends. And what's unique about this Chabad is there were several other girls who were converting who were also my age. How awesome is that? To just know that I have a community of people who are here, who are my age, doing the same thing I'm doing, and I'm not the only one who's crazy. <laughs> and it just pushed me even more to just, every time I, I take a new step in this journey, I'm always scared. <laughs> I'm always like, all right, now I gotta do this, and now I gotta do this, and now I gotta do that. But it just made me realize that Go and do it, do it scared and just look at all the blessings Hashem has planned for you. 
I did not think for a second I would be this comfortable. I'm, I'm good at throwing myself into situations, but it takes me a while to fully like accept what's going on and to get as comfortable as I can. But this happened almost immediately. And I am so excited to see what's going to happen in this Chabad community. I don't, every time someone ever mentions Chabad, I'm always, I always hear great things about it. I always hear how open they are, how welcoming they are. And I feel like this rabbi, I can honestly tell him anything and everything and I won't be judged or I, I, I don't feel scared to be me. Like, I was just so concerned. I was like, uh, I've been so good with covering my tattoos at the other shul. I feel like this one going in, especially since there's so many converts, I could just be myself. A big part of this journey is making sure you don't lose yourself. And I felt like for a few months, I was just trying to figure out where am I going here? Who am I trying to be? And now that I have a shul I can walk to and I could make friends my age and meet other women and basically share my experiences with, with them it makes me feel like I am I am well on my way to completing this journey like I said I don't I don't know when it will actually be completed but this just gave me hope it, it, it made me joyous it really put things into perspective for me and I'm no longer just going to be attached to things. I normally am not somebody who has a mind attached to, to something, but this journey, it's been hard to kind of let go of something and start a new thing. It's very hard to do that. So I'm very thankful that this community is here. This was probably one of the funnest Jewish holidays I've experienced. And I, cannot wait for what the future holds. So if you guys like my content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share my videos to anyone who needs to hear them. Thank you guys so much for following me on my journey and I'll see you in the next video. Shalom.